Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's we're gonna to be talking about some changes that are coming in the near future that is gonna make everything within the market a whole lot worse, as in everything's going to drop even more. Before we get into the video though, as always, if you wanna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. And if you wanna see more videos like this, I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Let's just dive right into it. So the core inflation rate for September was just released and it was over six and a half percent. And so what this means is that, well, stocks just plummeted a bunch and so did cryptocurrency because, well, yeah, I look at that stuff every single day because I invest and yeah, it's, it's kind of painful. But aside from everything in the market being negative today, what this means for us regular folks is that the Federal Reserve is definitely going to continue with the rate hikes and they're probably going to get even more aggressive than what they have said over the last few months which then means that interest rates associated with car loans and mortgages are also going to increase. And that's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. So let's first quickly talk about mortgage rates. And I wanna put a quick disclaimer that I am by no means an expert in this field. I am a car guy at heart, but I happen to own a home and I have a mortgage on it. So I have a little bit of experience and I did a little bit of research for this video before I brought this up. And so basically if the Federal Reserve hikes their, you know, reserve rate, then what that means is that that's going to influence some things in the market, which means that that's going to influence lenders to increase their rates on mortgages, which will most certainly put some downward pressure on the housing market from a price perspective. But that's obviously going to just depend on the region that you live in. So for example, I'm here in Utah and in Salt Lake County right now, housing prices are starting to come down, not by a massive amount, but they are starting to come down. But the area that I live in, housing prices aren't really coming down because there's a lot of people moving out here. And so that is still putting upward pressure. And there's also just not enough houses. Like the neighborhood that I live in right now, like it is full and then there's more people wanting to move in. So again, it's just again, going to depend on your region, but let's, let's move out of this uh, topic and yeah. Now onto the car loan side of things, this is also going to push up rates with car loans, which is going to be devastating for the car industry for a number of reasons. So first off, affordability is already at an all time low right now because interest rates are already really high. I've talked about this in several videos, but if you have perfect credit, then if you take out you know, a 48 month or a 60 month loan right now, you're probably gonna get quoted an interest rate between the high three and low fives, again, just depending on the exact vehicle you're purchasing and your situation coming into the purchase. Do you have money down? Do you have positive or negative equity in your trade-in? You know, what year is the vehicle that you're purchasing? There's a lot that goes into it. Uh, but point being, right, interest rate for 48 and 60 months is pretty high. And then you jump up to the terms that most people are going for, aka 72 months and 84 months, and you're looking at interest rates in the six to seven and even 8% range right now. Again, depending on the vehicle, depending on the situation, and so that brings down affordability by a pretty large margin. And so if interest rates increase above what we already have, then it's going to be absolutely devastating because it's looking like with how things are going, we're probably going to see interest rates in the 10% range for people that have perfect credit. And so then if you take a person that doesn't have perfect credit in the next few months, they're probably going to get quoted an interest rate of 15, 16% on their auto loan. If they're doing a longer term, if they're doing a shorter term, they're still probably gonna get quoted, you know, 12 to 14%. And I mean, that is just huge. I mean, if you do the math, this is going to be, you know, a payment increase on the average car of about, you know, a hundred to $200 per month. Again, depending on the exact price range that you're shopping within. And if you're in, you know, a super expensive range where you're trying to take out a big boy loan, then we're talking about, you know, several hundred dollars more per month in payment just because of the interest rate increase. So at this point, a lot of you are thinking, perfect. This means the car market is finally going to crash and I'm going to be able to buy an affordable car. Well, not exactly. This is where things get kind of interesting. So on the used car side of things, yes, used cars are declining at a pretty rapid rate. On average, used cars are losing 0.25% in value per 
week. And so what this means is if you go and purchase a $100,000 car today, then you're gonna lose $250 in value per week, $1,000 per month, and $12,000 over the course of a year in value, which is, again, getting closer to what a normal market looks like. But the thing that is going to be absolutely devastating to the market is we had a lot of people pay big premiums over MSRP for pretty much every single vehicle. There was a point last year where there was not a single transaction pretty much that was at MSRP or under MSRP with every single major brand. I think that maybe like Alfa Romeo and Maserati that are just always struggling might have had transaction prices that were at MSRP or maybe a little bit below, but every other manufacturer was, you know, at least five hundred or a thousand dollars over MSRP with their average transaction. So Everyone paid over MSRP for their cars, and now their cars are declining in value at a rate of, again, 0.25% per week. And so you can see that there's a lot of people that are gonna be very, very upside down in their vehicles in the near future. And so they're gonna go and, again, try to trade these things in, and they're gonna realize that they can't, and yeah, it's gonna cause a lot of issues. What is most likely gonna happen because of the rapid decline of the used car market is there's a lot of people that are just gonna be pulled out of the car market. They're just gonna have to hold onto their car and continue to drive it and pay down their loans before they can go and trade it in. And this is where things get kind of confusing because since values are declining at such a rapid rate and it's gonna pull a lot of people out of the market because they won't be able to trade in because their cars will be worth so little compared to their loan values, well then supply is gonna become even lower than it is today. Similar to what's kind of happening with the housing market where people are deciding to not sell their houses because they're like, okay, well, if I go and try to sell my house and buy a new house, I'm gonna to have to have a higher interest rate, higher payment, and it just doesn't make sense. And also I won't be able to get as much money for my house right now, so I'm just not gonna sell my house. Again, same thing is kind of starting to happen within the car market on a small scale, but it is slowly expanding. And so that'll actually push prices of used cars back up because there won't be enough supply. So in the short term, values are gonna to continue to decline. But in the long term, there's a chance that we're gonna hit this point where things are gonna stabilize. And I'm of the opinion, this is just my opinion, that we're probably gonna stabilize higher than where we were at prior to the pandemic because we're just at the point where car prices are just gonna be what they are because of the new car market. And now you're probably thinking that, okay, well, if the used car market's declining a massive amount, then the new car market should also be declining by a massive amount. And that's not what's happening. The new car market is actually still increasing in terms of average price. And what's basically happening is manufacturers are just continuing to increase the MSRP price on their vehicles because they're still struggling to build enough vehicles to meet demand. Even though demand has diminished within certain categories, there are other categories that demand has not diminished with. And so manufacturers are focusing on those categories and they're basically starting to build more vehicles within those categories and they're building less vehicles within the categories where demand is diminishing. I mean, it just makes logical sense when you think about it. And so with the new car market, things are gonna continue to be really, really expensive. And so I would not have any sort of expectation that you're gonna get massive discounts on new cars unless it's product that just isn't all that desirable in today's market, the product that's starting to you know slowly pile up on dealer lots. And so if you're wanting anything that has any sort of hype behind it, then you're still gonna have to wait at this point. And I think a really good example right now is with Ford. Ford is cutting a lot of options out of their vehicles for the 2023 model year because they just cannot get enough supply of what they need to meet demand. And so they're like, you know what? Okay, we're gonna stop building certain vehicles and we're gonna focus on building more vehicles, but we're also gonna be building those vehicles with certain options missing so that we can build even more. Like it, it's a whole mess. And a lot of, like I said, a lot of manufacturers are dealing with these issues right now. And it seems like, the supply issues have gotten even worse. You think that they would have a fix at this point, but yeah, it's just not what's happening. Here's the deal. If you are currently planning on trading in a car, you need to understand that your car is literally just sitting there and throwing money into a fire at this point. It is losing value every single day. And so, it's probably better to trade in sooner rather than later because even if for some reason you're able to get a slightly better deal on a new car, your car is gonna be worth so much less that the deal would have probably been the same if you had just purchased now rather than later. And the thing that's 
gonna be an issue with purchasing later is that interest rates will be even higher. So if you take out a loan on a car at a later date, then not only will your car be worth less money, but you'll also be paying more in interest on the car that you purchase. And so it'll just be a worse deal overall for you. And so if you can find a deal on a vehicle that makes sense for you at this point where you can afford the payment and uh, the trade-in value makes sense, because like I said, your trade-in value is going to be more now than it will be tomorrow with the decline of the market, then yeah, I think that now could make sense if you're planning on keeping this car for a while. And again, like I've said in prior videos, if you really need a car, if you don't need a car, I don't think that right now is the best time to buy unless you are a cash buyer and you're able to find a really good deal on specialty product that's you know being discontinued in the future. A good example is Dodge is getting rid of the Hellcat. And so if you happen to have enough cash on hand to buy a Hellcat outright, then yeah, it'll probably be worth something decent in the future. In the short term, I don't know, right? Because again, everything's declining right now in the market, but in the long term, it'll probably be worth something. So it's probably worth getting, especially if you're an enthusiast with the car. But I think that if you're just looking to buy a regular run of the mill car, that's not special, it's not being discontinued, then yeah, you should probably take a step back unless you desperately need a new vehicle. With that being said, that's going to sum things up for today's video. Let me know if you guys like this new format where I kind of discuss a little bit more outside of the car market. Again, it does take a little bit more time for me to produce a video because I have to do a little bit more research because unlike the car market, I'm not constantly reading up on those things. And again, I'm not like experiencing it in real time because well, with the car market, I'm constantly going to dealerships and getting information from them and then, you know, researching the market. Whereas with the other stuff like housing and stocks and everything, it's just based on, you know, the research that I find. And then what I see personally, when I see my uh, portfolios continue to decline every single day. Yeah. RIP my retirement. Anyways, I'll see you.